All right, welcome into the studios, everyone. You'll recognize Mr. Guy Cochran. Uh, Guy, thank you for coming in today. You, you wear so many hats in our community, but we have you in today. First of all, we want to start out, ladies and gentlemen, to talk about our, our recent gas shortage. And, and hopefully we're on the, the, the tail end of, of what's going on now. But what can you tell us at this point? Well, uh, Ron, it's been an interesting week. Last Friday, a week ago, we, we were told that the uh, Colonial Pipeline had been attacked, you know, and everybody's heard now of a cyber attack. Yeah. And <clears throat> we got our fuel delivery that day, but we, having been through this with hurricanes, you know, where you, uh, the terminal's down, we, we went ahead and started rationing Friday. We were a little ahead of some of our competitors with that. But, mm -hmm. but what I can tell you, Ron, is it's uh, people don't, <clears throat> I didn't know this, uh, you know, just when you get into industry, obviously you have a little more of an insight as to how it all works. But the USA is broken up into PADS, P-A-D, which is an acronym for Petroleum Area of Distribution. So we're in PAD 1, which is the southeast, <clears throat> and, there, and there's like I said five or six, maybe seven across the U.S. Okay. So <clears throat> as you've heard in the news, right at 50 percent of our refined products come from the Colonial Pipeline. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's, it's, a, it's a huge deal when, when we have a disruption with it. And uh, most people don't know that there are pipelines all over the United States. That's, that's why I don't want to get political, but that's why it's so crazy that we counseled uh, the Keystone XL Pipeline because we need to continue, just like you build roads and bridges, you need to yeah. continue to build infrastructure and, and uh, oil and gas, uh, again, are they drive our economy, right. and uh, you know we. I'm an all of the above guy. I believe in every kind of energy source we can we can harness, mm -hmm. and uh, <clears throat> for electricity that needs to be nuclear. By the way, that's the cleanest, most efficient. But next to that's natural gas. But being energy independent is certainly something that uh, we know now how critical it is. You just have a little blip, and you yeah. see how it impacts your economy. But so all of our fuel comes out of a lot of it. Fifty percent of it comes out of Houston out of where they have the refineries, where they get the crude oil from <clears throat> Texas, U.S. Com coming down from Canada through the XL, through the Keystone Pipeline. The XL was just an expansion of the Keystone Pipeline. It's refined in that area and then it's shipped all over the country. Now there's refineries on the west coast, there are refineries other places, but the area that the pad, pad one that we're in, where we get most of our fuel comes out of that Houston area. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of crazy to think that that's where our gas comes from. Florida's a little different because they got the ports down there and they get theirs directly, you know, from the, they get it right there, uh, you know, at the, at the, at the uh, port of entry. But it's, uh, and again, I don't pretend to know a lot about the intricacies of how that works. Uh, our, our, what most people in Dublin, Lawrence County, 99% of what you get comes out of the Macon terminal. Mm -hmm. There's a terminal in Augusta. There's a terminal in, uh, in Savannah, but it's all about freight. And you want to, as an operator, I want to buy my fuel from as close a place as I can so I have as little freight cost as possible so I can sell it as competitively as possible. Sure. So uh, the making terminal has, has been on and off since last Friday. And it's been a, a, a kind of a, what they call an allocation situation where you, you, you have a contract with these various partners at the Colonial Pipeline. Uh, they all have a, you know, they, they um, have a deal with Colonial, let's say Chevron, Exxon, Marathon, uh, all have a deal with the Colonial Pipeline and with the Macon Terminal as to how much they can store and how much they're allocated. So it's, a, it's an interesting process, but when it gets on down to the jobber and retailer, mm -hmm. Uh, you know, it's about how much you're contracted and sometimes you get all that, sometimes you get a portion of it. Uh, where, where you, you know, a branded product typically is more dependable than the independent brands. But yeah. I know I'm getting into the weeds. It's, mm -hmm. it's, 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 it's but, but simply to say, <clears throat> it's, not, it's not as simple as it would, you would think it would be. And, uh, you know, when they're refining certain products and moving them through, I really don't understand how all that works. All I know is that they'll call us and say we have no, unlet, no unleaded gas. But we got plenty of premium. Yeah. Well, you know, most people, <laughs> to, trust me, 75% of the population buys unleaded 
and then the other 25% are split between plus and premium. Yeah. But if you have a choice between no gas mm -hmm. and premium, you'll, you'd rather have some premium. So we right. actually have one station, that's all we got. It's premium right now today. Mm. And we just, <clears throat> we, we took it down to cost and just put a big note on the pump, said everything's, this is premium gas, this is all we got. So yeah. sorry, and we're selling it to you as cheap as we can. Yeah. But uh, it's, it's kind of, we got some this morning, we got two loads in that we had hoped to get four, we, so we got 50%. So I think we're going to be uh, in the same mode of uh, rationing and being out and, and, and having some for probably a couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. You just can't turn that thing, just imagine the volume of, of product yeah. that flows. It's not a supply product problem, it's a, it's a pipeline problem. It's a, it's an infrastructure problem, but there's yeah. plenty of gas. Okay, now, now, Guy, if we take, for example, you, you, we just did a ribbon cut in that uh, right. 19 at your location right. out there. Now, let's take diesel out, maybe, and let's look at the, the fuel that a, a tanker would bring in to you on an average drop. Right. What, what would that be? Well, <clears throat> diesel weighs more than gas, yeah. so <clears throat> uh, typically you get around 7,500 gallons of diesel per, per tanker. Okay. You can get up to 85 to 88 hundred gallons of gasoline because it's not as heavy. Mm -hmm. And uh, what we've been doing is splitting what they call splitting a load. Uh, those, those tankers that you see going up and down the interstate mm -hmm. have two to three th compartments, some have four I guess. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know that's designed to be able to carry some unleaded yeah. and some premium in the old days, some plus. Now, okay. now, now most everybody blends their, their premium and their unleaded it actually is computerized and blends at the pump. You know, you get a certain percent of this, a certain percent of that, and you sure. get the get the uh, the plus grade. Okay. But that's about what you what you got going up down the road. About average eight thousand gallons yeah. of, of fuel. And and so a delivery at that largest store with with mm -hmm. that volume, what would you get in on a on a delivery normally? Well, I usually get a, a tanker load. A tanker there. load. Yeah, so I you usually got don't. close to nine thousand. Well, we we have a. Uh, when we built the new store, we uh, being on the interstate, you learn. If you don't learn over time, you're not, you know, you're not doing your job. Right. But we, we uh, have got a, uh, a pretty good bit of capacity there. The gasoline capacity is 25,000 gallons. The tank it's split. Okay. And then the uh, diesel is a, a 30,000 gallon tank. Mm -hmm. So they're, you know, they're they're large tanks, so that yeah. you can drop a whole, you know, tanker load. Sure. And uh, at a time. And um, typically in the old days, you would have a, a station would have like three 8,000 gallon tanks mm -hmm. or three 10,000 gallon tanks uh, for unleaded plus and premium. But over the years, that's like I said, people are going to one big tank that's compartmentalized. Yeah. But uh, that's kind of how that works. But I thought your viewers might might ha be interested to know just, uh, and it's, it's interesting how it's, it's changed over the years. You know, we got energy independent under the Trump administration which is first time in a long time, maybe back to the 60s or, or 50s. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, we, we kind of chose to buy that cheap Saudi Arabian crude until OPEC got together and, and started colluding and, yeah. and jacking the price up. Sure. But, you know, uh, every, every product that you get out of oil converts to a different amount of that product when you take a lot of people don't maybe know the, the origin of a barrel of oil, but in the old days, standard oil, when they were starting, that's how they hauled fuel around. They actually filled up 55-gallon barrels, wow. put them on a truck, and, uh, you know, pull with a, with a whole, <laughs> with, I guess, an automobile, but, but that's, that's where that measurement came from. That's wow. how they moved oil around the country in 55-gallon barrels. There were no pipelines, and there in the transports, you know, there were no transports, and of course, this is oil that hadn't been refined. So the, uh, uh, an average barrel of oil will, a barrel of oil will refine to 42 gallons of gas. Mm. So we use just under 15 million barrels of oil a day, a day in this country. So 15 million barrels of oil equates to about 630 million gallons of gas per day. And we consume about 15% of the world's energy, uh, you know, fossil fuel consumption per day. So it's, 
it's pretty staggering how, how much, but it also lets you know the enormity of, 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 the, of the energy sector and, and how huge a part of our economy it is. And, yes. and that's, that's why you see other countries racing to do exactly what we've done over the last uh, 100 years, you know. Mm -hmm. but, yeah, and good moves have been made, but again, it's, it's getting it here right now. It's the process yeah, of getting it here. It is, and you know, these kind of things, we all know, uh, I heard a guy on one of the shows last night talking about, you know, he was giving Trump credit for starting the Space Force, and we almost really need a cyber force. Mm -hmm. He was making the point that we, uh, we teach all our, we, our, our young, brilliant minds all this about IT and then they, they get gobbled up by Microsoft or Google or, yeah. or somebody and we need to be, we need a, 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 a military branch and this guy's opinion that's dedicated to cyber and I, I don't disagree with that. I mean, sure. it's just, it's crazy, the, you know, uh, how it's far we've come. For us. I'm dating myself, I feel, I don't feel that old, but I can look in the mirror and tell I'm not a, <laughs> I'm not a young man anymore, but I remember when we didn't have a personal computer Yes. <laughs> I remember when we didn't have a cell phone. Sure. And uh, this young millennial generation, they just, I yeah. mean, they don't, they don't understand no. how, what, what, what it was like. What would that have been like? Huh? <laughs> yeah. When what, you had to drive 30, we used to, we used to go, uh, still uh, go hunting out west when I can, and we would drive 30 miles into town, go to a coin-operated payphone, Make a call and say, "Hey, I'm still alive." <laughs> you know, yeah, everything's about, all right. About every three days, we check in. Mm -hmm. But uh, you know, the, now you just climb up on a, just get up on a high spot and call home. So yeah. it's it's changed, yeah. and and that's we all know that's good and bad, and it's made us a lot more vulnerable to these these kind of you know uh, mm -hmm. hacks. And the it, you know, I, I hated that they you know they paid supposedly they paid the ransom. Right. Uh, five million bucks or so. Right. So it'll happen again. Sure you know? it will. I mean, yeah. We'll take a short break and be right back so you stay with us. At City of Hope Heart and Vascular Center, we do your heart right. Count on Dr. Collins A. Cortang, MD, FACC, FSCAI, and his competent staff to treat you with specialties in internal medicine, echocardiology, nuclear cardiology, general adult cardiology, and interventional cardiology. Other areas of expertise that Dr. K and his complete staff can help you with are acute and chronic heart attack management, peripheral interventions to save legs, heart rhythm abnormalities. So count on the professional and knowledgeable staff at Dr. Kortang's City of Hope today. Call 478-353-1970, City of Hope Heart and Vascular Center. See us today at 207A Fairview Park Drive in Dublin. If you've never had a cardiologist or if you need a second opinion, come see City of Hope Heart and Vascular Center today. Thinking about what to do after high school? How about jumping directly into your future? Oconee Fall Line Technical College offers hundreds of programs to prepare students for the real world. From business to healthcare to professional and technical services, our graduates go straight into a career. And tuition, surprisingly affordable. At Oconee Fall Line Technical College, you will succeed sooner. Apply today at OFTC.edu. Once again, here with Guy Cochran. Uh, you, you operate Friendly Gus Cochran Brothers for years and years. Just to recap a little bit of what, in like 1915, you guys opened up? You got a good memory. <laughs> <laughs> we did. My, my granddad that I'm named after yeah. uh, started uh, Cochran Smith feed and seed in 1913 with Mr. Milo Smith Sr. Uh, Many people still remember Milo Smith, his son. And uh, both of the Milo and my, my grandfather Guy were drafted in World War I. And my, my granddad went first and when Milo went after him, B.F. Cochran, my great granddad, he bought Milo's interest out. And when the, my grandfather came back, he resumed operating and sometime Later, in the early 1940s, they actually became Cochran Brothers Wholesale Grocers and built, we were in the building supply business for about 40 years, 50 years, yeah. yeah. So that was, you know, as a kid growing up, uh, I didn't uh, understand much about the business other than we had a big warehouse and a lot of neat places to climb up and stop <laughs> stuff and hide and play hide and seek and yeah. we'd go down there and get in trouble, you yeah. know, and things like that. But yeah. 
but my dad, I got to give him credit, uh, Ben Cochran, uh, uh, you know, when he came back from his Air Force uh, obligation, he, he, uh, was a, he was a fighter pilot, and of course my son Ben is, is, is doing that now. But um, uh, he, he hadn't been back in the business long, and he realized all the independent grocers were going away. And that was, he, you know, Cochran Brothers had been really good. He was the baby in the family, and he, he spoiled. You know, and he, he, <laughs> he was able to uh, travel a lot because my grandmama and granddaddy had, had pretty much semi-retired, and they had, they had a missionary child and a child that was a missionary in Brazil had one over in England that was doing, who also married a, a guy that was in seminary. So anyway, they traveled a lot. And uh, he just remembered a lot of good things and he just thought this business is really, you know, he, he, he didn't really, I don't think, understand. He said this to me, so I feel like I could say this, Dad. <laughs> he said, I didn't know what I was getting into, you know, because every business is always evolving and right. the wholesale uh, grocery business had, had, had it was ahead of its time as far as consolidation and mm -hmm. And uh, he was able to to recognize he had to do something, or he, it was going to just come down the vines kind of thing. So he and my brother-in-law Gus Ladson in 1979, who Gus had been working with Win Dixie, they started Friendly Gus. Okay. And I was over defending the country over at Fort Benning, Georgia. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I joined the army. I thought they'd send me off to see the world. They sent me to Columbus, Georgia. Yeah, I but, that. But it was a great experience, and uh, so we talked back and forth and. And uh, they, Gus proved out this little mousetrap of putting a kitchen in a convenience store and selling fried chicken. And, and that was kind of, uh, we saw it as an opportunity to differentiate ourselves from the, from the sea store industry, which was a real, it was, was in its infancy at that time. So that was kind of what, uh, we, that model is what we tried to emulate and we've expanded on it over the years. And, mm -hmm. And um, uh, so, and everybody's doing it now. If you're not in food service, you're, you're missing it in the sea store business. And sure. It's funny, people used to say, uh, uh, you know, that gas station food's good, you know, and now, now it's just, it took people a, a while to get comfortable buying food from what they quote considered a, a gas station. Sure. But, but that's uh, with uh, the big guys getting into it, mm -hmm. that's, that's changed a lot. Yeah. So convenient to stop by Friendly Gus. Where, where are you going to get something to eat Friendly Gus? They stop by. People love sweet tea. People are addicted to getting that tea every morning. I mean, I know people. That's the only tea they want to drink. And I got to say this, you know, at, at, at first thought, I may think, well, that's not what you want to be known for. But the more uh, business owners, restaurant owners, mm -hmm. um, places that I know that service the public, you want to be known for a clean bathroom. Oh, and yeah. I've had people tell me, stop at the Friendly Gus, but they got a clean bathroom. Yeah. I'll go in there. I know that's going to be clean. Hey, that's something to brag about. I mean, really. Well, for a, brief, for a brief moment in time, you mentioned our ribbon cutting. We had the yeah. nicest, largest, cleanest bathrooms on I-16. <laughs> and now now Love's has opened a new store. Uh -huh. And there's, a, there's, there's another couple, so I'm not going to just say that, that out. But there's a company that a lot of people, they just opened in Warner Robins. That, they just got a really interesting, you know, uh, uh, format called Bucky's. And um, mm. I'd heard of them. But their claim to fame is not that we have the cheapest gas in town. Yeah. I shouldn't be doing a dead gum promotion for my competition. <laughs> I? But they, their claim to fame is we have the cleanest bathrooms in America. Yeah. And so, you know, you, you, McDonald's, when I was growing up, had right. that reputation. That's right. If you wanted to go to a clean bathroom, you knew McDonald's would have mm -hmm. one. So, so we've, we've tried our best, and it's a struggle to keep, sure. you know, the public is messy. <laughs> <laughs> Customers don't help you. Do oh, they? gosh. Yeah. 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 But, but it's. It's, uh, you know, the things we try to make sure is obviously our name's Friendly Gus, and I, I've, I've had to counsel people for not being friendly. You know, uh, it's, it's yeah. you know, it's got to be, it's got to be something that's just, that you make a part of your culture, but cleanliness, service, that's the McDonald's credo was, sure. you know, cleanliness and service. It's not the Big Mac. And, uh, of course, the gold standard today, and I'll give them kudos as far as service, is, is the Chick-fil-A folks. They do a great job. Uh, we like to think we do a good job. We're trying to be in that same, you know, uh, uh, category with uh, service and everything. Yeah. But it's a never, it's a battle. And, and you know, one thing that's, that we had, I know we're talking, supposed to be talking about shortage of gas. Well, you know. But the biggest thing challenging small businesses today mm -hmm. is competing with all of these extended uh, stimulus uh, unemployment benefits that exceed what, uh, you know, they could make working at a, a, a entry-level job. So. Right. Chick-fil-A, I understand, 
uh, stopped doing breakfast. Uh, they may have restarted, but sometime somebody told me they were cutting. They didn't start breakfast till eight. They cut their hours back. Uh, by day, you had several of their restaurants that were closing at three in the afternoon because you just can't find help. Can't find help. So people are being paid to stay home. They're getting paid to stay home. And we got to address that, and hopefully we will. But but I, I don't want to go too much past you. You're talking about your dad, and what a, a great example he is. I mean. Uh, what respect that the community has for him, Guy. I mean, it has to make you feel so good. He has that, that gentle character, but he's so knowledgeable. Uh, you wouldn't be where you are without your dad, for sure, and I know you'd say that. But family, I, I know when, when, um, when I bought the TV station back in 07 and, and I hired my brother to come to work, and people say, why? Well, How's that going to be, you know, you <laughs> you and your brother working together? You know, when it, it's obviously the best hire I could have made, you know, mm -hmm. with my brother because he's phenomenal. Uh, but, you know, and you've had your brothers involved, family mm -hmm. members involved, and, and everybody is given something, but you've mm -hmm. made adjustments over time. Mm -hmm. uh, and then when you look at that and you look at the family name, it has to make you real proud. Well, we're, we're, we're humbled. We feel like God's been incredibly merciful and has extended us a lot of grace. We... Uh, you know, uh, uh, my dad will tell you by just God's grace, he survived. Uh, he, he, uh, he, it's funny, he, he wouldn't mind me telling this. He had a, was going through a review from one of our major suppliers, mm -hmm. one of the tobacco companies, and they, they looked at his numbers and says, there's no way that you can be in business with this. And he said, I've been doing this six years. So, you know, by just sheer hard work, getting up every day and scratching and clawing and trying yeah. to figure it out, he, yeah. he you know, it, it made him realize he had to do something different, and that's mm -hmm. how the Friendly Gus start, thing started. And, mm -hmm. and Gus had that same mindset when he was starting Friendly Gus, and he, he proved out this idea. Yeah. And then, you know, again, I was watching from the sidelines, and they were, uh, you know, Gus was looking for some help, and I was looking for something to do that I felt like I could raise a family here. I had great memories of Dublin, Georgia as a kid. So, mm -hmm. so Tina and I made the decision and she, she, she moved here in the sixth grade to come back. But now uh, my dad and my mom, uh, you know, behind every successful man, you're gonna find a, a fine woman and, and my mother's uh, and that, that is, is that. And, and uh, yeah. so it was, you know, it's been, a, it's been, and like I said, family businesses are not easy. Mm -hmm. And we've, we've gone through a lot of gyrations and, and we're still around. And, and actually yeah. my son-in-law, Matt Jones, is the fifth generation of family in the business. And yeah. he's been with us now two and a half years and mm -hmm. convinced him to leave a very successful legal career in Atlanta with a very prestigious firm up there. And uh, it's, he's, been a, he's been a very, very huge blessing to me to, to allow me to, you know, to pursue a lot of things, I, you know, kind of, I told him, you're going to wear a lot of hats. And one of the hats is going to be all the stuff guys sick of doing. <laughs> you know? So it's been fun. Yeah, yeah. And so let's talk just for a moment now. You have your finger on the pulse of a lot of things going on. You were at a political event this morning. Yeah, we had an event. Uh, I was asked to host an event that uh, Jimmy Allgood kind of spearheaded for Attorney General Chris Carr. And, uh, and, and, uh, Again, I think um, you have to be involved. Uh, our our uh, founders uh, wanted us to be a representative government, and that's the biggest challenge. Uh, you don't want to get me too much on politics, but I, I'm, a, I'm a constitutional conservative, and yes. I've, I've voted all over the place, but I'm, I line up with people who believe our Constitution next to the Bible is the most sacred document man's ever penned because it's amazing. And it's under attack. Uh, it's under attack uh, by what I would just call the bureaucracy, the administrative state, departments of, and uh, you know, our, our, law, our lawmakers unfortunately don't make law much. You know, they have their lobbyists that hand them a bill mm -hmm. and uh, the bureaucracies uh, then take that bill and then they, uh, they implement it. And, and then, then, then we, the people, have to scream and say, do you know what you're doing to me? Yeah. Do you, you know, with everything from yeah. the Environmental Protection Agency, with you, you all, you've heard the horror stories of, of waters of the U.S. and all the, all the struggles yeah. that they had with just, just enlarging the port down there. The greatest, uh, Jimmy and uh, Ben Hall, uh, both Jimmy Allgood and Ben Hall, have been involved in our port authority for, uh, since Nathan Deal was governor. That has been a huge, huge reason Georgia has grown like it has. Right. It's just growing like crazy. They hired Griff Lynch uh, a few years ago to, to, he was there, but he's now the, the, the man in charge. And, <clears throat> and, uh, but they ran into just years and years of environmental studies. 
and you know, you, you have to at some point say, this, this is what we're going to do, and here's the, the benefits, and here's the, you know, the, the cost, and make a decision and move on, and not study a road project for 20 years. Right. Because, but, but anyway, uh, yeah, Chris Carr uh, was here this morning, and fine, fine young man. I knew him back when he was the uh, economic developer for the state of Georgia, mm. and he actually worked for Johnny Isaacson in his office at about the same time that that uh, Johnny uh, uh, nominated my son Ben for the Air Force Academy. So yeah. we'll go back a long way. Yeah, yeah. And with with uh, what you have going on, you know, through Friendly Gus and the development of that, but with the development authority and we're trying to bring industry in, you all, the, the, the board there has had its its struggles mm -hmm. and many opportunities, but we, we are poised for growth. We are yeah. poised for a lot of opportunity, but when you look at that, when you meet other developers in other areas, um, and, and you see that jockeying for position, that, that, mm -hmm. that trying to get the industry to come in every size town, mm -hmm. every combined county in the metro area and, and along the, mm -hmm. the coast, um, it's competition. It's a lot oh, of it is, and, and we, we're, we're fine with that. Uh, I will, you know, Chris Carr mentioned this morning that I forget how many years in a row we've been the number one state in the nation to do business. I think it's seven. And uh, Governor Purdue maybe started that. Nathan Deal kept it going. Well, that'd be eight. So I guess Nathan maybe got it the first time. But it, it doesn't just happen. You have to have visionary leadership. I think our port, our, air, our, our Georgia port, our airport, our uh, interstate systems, all of it uh, combined you got to have the infrastructure, you got to have the workforce, and that's mm -hmm. the big challenge all over the country now. Right. But, you know, the things that uh, we, we were able to do, we were only able to do as a development authority because of our county and, and city elected officials' support. Mm -hmm. uh, back, uh, you know, I've been on a while, and there's a, me and Jimmy and uh, Roger Folsom came on about the same time, and mm -hmm. uh, James Malone, I think, is the oldest member of the authority. But we, we had, we were kind of flying by the seat of our pants. We had a very, very good legacy to, 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 to continue to build on, yeah. but, but times change, just like we're talking about business. In the old days, it was political connections more so. Mm -hmm. Today, it's about having very, very good relationships with consultants, mm -hmm. uh, with developers, mm -hmm. and, and then you have to have a package that there's not a mystery. When they walk in, you say, how many jobs are you gonna create? How much money are you gonna invest? And for, for the job, number of jobs created and the amount of money invested, we will do this for you. Uh, and, and, that, and that's negotiated, but the basic framework is there. Yes. Uh, so you have to have that and be consistent with it. And then you put in pretty elaborate, uh, you know, uh, uh, MOUs, memorandums of understanding that you hope you really don't ever have to do what they call claw back. But sometimes you do. You have to claw back and get, get your community's investment back when, when people don't. Uh, hold up their end of the deal, mm -hmm. but yeah, I'm, I'm I'm optimistic. I think we we started with a uh, Miss Willie Paul with us or so. She's Willie's, uh, you know, is is great. But we kind of knew we had to take it to this next level, and we right. uh, and, you know Willie was wearing about four hats. And we, you remember young Cal Ray? He's sure. now one of the uh, most highly regarded uh, economic developers in the state of Georgia. He's over in, in the Augusta market. But we established the Office of Economic Development put into place these formal, uh, you know, uh, protocols. And uh, uh, it's been, a, you know, one of my uh, highest honors to be able to serve on it. And uh, the board is, uh, you know, changes from time to time, but it's been a group of men who have, and, and some women who I have the utmost respect for. And, and we have had, you know, there's no secret that the, the, the Valmera project was a huge disappointment but sure. but we're currently that that currently is uh, uh, you know owned by St. Gobain's the oldest company in the world uh, just phenomenal company so hopefully they're gonna you know make the decision to they they obviously wouldn't have purchased it if they don't they feel like the North American market is is really good for that you know Valmero wouldn't have done what they did had not they really believed that the North American market was wide open so the thing, the untold story, Ron, that a lot of people don't hear is the things that are going on behind the scenes, the EDAs, economic development agreements that we're doing with some of the existing industries, that, that is uh, really, really uh, exciting and, 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 you know, 
you, 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 there's a lot to be said about keeping industries that you got yeah, and helping them, helping them navigate these changes that we're talking mm -hmm. about. So we're, we're keeping, we're hoping that everything, you know, goes good with St. Gobain's and, and, um, and, and again, you just ride around the county and you see what's going on with a lot of these industries that are, that are making decisions to invest in Lawrence County. So we're really excited about that and, and we, we help any and every way we can. Yeah, yeah, and thank you for that. Thank you for what you're doing personally, but as, as a group, what you all are doing, and you just continue to evolve, that's what you have to do. Yeah. We'll take a short break and be right back. At Lakes Alignment, we would like to take this time to thank our community for your support over the last 66 years and especially these last few months with the opening of our brand new truck center. When you drive into Lakes Alignment, you get master trained technicians like Anthony Penny. Everybody calls him Bug, but it means so much to us. And on behalf of Neil Harden, Lisa, our staff, and the entire Lake family, we thank you for supporting us since 1954. Come see us today. We open every morning at eight o'clock and now our truck center is open on Saturday to serve your big trucks and equipment from eight until 12. At Lakes Alignment, we thank you and this entire community and will continue to serve you with the best trained staff and friendly, courteous service. Lakes Alignment, hometown people serving hometown people. Come see us today, 104 Johnson Street, East Dublin. Hello, my name is Reggie Gay. I'm the owner and operator of Middle Georgia Insurance right here in Dublin, Georgia. We're excited about a new law that just went into effect on February 15th. There is a new special enrollment period with the healthcare marketplace. It runs through August the 15th and for anyone that doesn't have current health insurance has an opportunity to get health insurance without having to wait for the next open enrollment this fall. This has never been done since the healthcare marketplace has begun. So take advantage of that now before time runs out. At Middle Georgia Insurance, we're continuously working and searching for right plans in the marketplace. Come by today and see us at 1307 Bellevue Avenue right here in Dublin. No cavemen, no lizards, just great insurance. All right, so back with you. And you know, guy, we started out with the, you know, the, the shortage of fuel. And, and so we, we see so many people, I mean, I, you know, I do a little travel around like you do, and you, you see people just in long lines. You see so many uh, taped off pumps. You see one line that may be open. You mm -hmm. see people waiting when a tanker pulls up. Mm -hmm. They sit at the pump and wait on opportunity. But the one thing you see that's very wrong, and, and, and that is, uh, putting fuel in unapproved containers. <laughs> they, they had something online, somebody showed me, a lady trying to put it into a bag, yeah, like a plastic, a plastic bag. bag. What in the world is that? Well, before I answer that question, let me give a shout out to Ryan Waldrop and Beth Crompton. Back to the development authority for a minute. We, just so, so the folks watching may not know, those, those Ryan's our president mm -hmm. and Beth's our operations director and they do a great job. Yeah. And uh, we're real excited about, uh, you know, Ryan's been with us this June, two years. So we're, we're in Beth's been with us. You know, she was with Heart of Georgia Tech before she uh, became uh, involved with the Development Authority. But right. um, so back to the uh, craziness of, of uh, hoarding. Yeah. Hoarding is a real thing. Uh, I'm, I'm married to a hoarder. Uh, I didn't know that, but her mother was a hoarder. Yeah. And uh, Miss Eugenia Price, one of the finest women God's ever created. Uh, but, you know, they think when something's on sale, they're supposed to buy it. And, you know, we've got enough chicken at our freezers <laughs> at our house. I could really stock a friendly gust store for about a week oh just on what we got. So uh, people just go crazy. And, uh, you know, I remember I was down here when we had the pandemic last right. year and I said, don't mm -hmm. panic. There's going to be plenty of toilet paper. And by the end of the day, every toilet paper we had in yeah, our warehouse was gone. Was gone. Yeah. So it's the same thing. And, and it is dangerous. The difference between hoarding toilet paper and hoarding gas is you can hurt yourself and others yeah. by putting gas in unimproved uh, c containers and yeah. you just can't believe what people will do. Mm -hmm. uh, I heard from a friend of mine who was a local business guy in town here that Tractor Supply was having to, to, to uh, allocate the number of gas cans that, that people could buy. Right. People just going there buying up everything they got. Mm -hmm. So it's crazy. Um, but, but there's an end in sight in your mind, isn't there? Oh, yeah, there? yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, everybody needs to just relax in the Colonial Pipeline's back open. It, it was announced yesterday afternoon. And uh, I think uh, it's going to be one of those, 
like the traffic in Atlanta. When you <laughs> rush up and stop, and then yeah. you wait, then you rush and stop, it's gonna be that way. That pipeline's, it's gonna be just drained as quick as it gets to a terminal yeah. because people are, there's so much uh, backlog. But if everybody will relax and quit, and quit hoarding, uh, I yeah. think that it'll, it'll, it'll allow them to, to fill uh, re replenish the various uh, parts of the state and the southeast quicker. Uh, I was here, I heard this morning that there's one community, and I don't want to misspeak, but it's completely out. There's no nowhere to buy gas. Monday, there was nowhere in Millersville to buy gas except for like us. <laughs> we yeah. had, and we just had a little bit left. But, yeah. but uh, anyway, um, you know, we'll, we'll get through this and and uh, I think I think people will relax now that the pipeline's back open and hopefully sure. they'll quit making the, the run on the fuel and that kind yeah. of thing. So you think maybe, uh, I don't know, 15 days, 30 days, we should be looking at? Well, there's speculation that there's, there's hope that things will be back to normal by Memorial Day weekend, which is a big, you know, travel, travel. day weekend. So yeah. I think uh, folks are, are, are uh, hopeful that that can occur. And I, I, well, today's the, what, 14th. I, th I think that's, that should be achievable unless there's some other hiccup yeah. in the yeah. system. Yeah, and it can happen. Oh, but, yeah. But planning ahead, you know, looking at, at opportunities to better serve when something happens, controlling mm -hmm. bad situations, that's something the industry does. And, and I would say it stands to reason to me that 15 stores that Friendly Gus has and they're pumping gas into, you're going to get supplies when a mom and pop, a one store, probably going to be a little bit further down the line. I, I'm sure that's probably the way it works. Well, if you don't have a contract with a someone in Macon and you don't have a strong relationship with a jobber, mm -hmm. if you're not, if you're, you know, we're kind of a sub jobber. We, we were direct with Chevron and back in the uh, early 2000s, we decided to drop that and sub job under a gentleman in Millersville named Horace Chambers. And that gives you a a guaranteed supply versus somebody who's just calling up and saying, what's your price today? Yeah. Those guys are having a hard time. I mean, yeah. they're not getting any product. I've had uh, half a dozen independents call, call us and say, don't you have some gas you can let me have? Yeah. And you hate, you hate to say, uh, sorry, I don't because we don't. You have I mean, to service your customers. We got, well, we have to take care of our own company and, mm -hmm. and, um, you know, uh, those when you when you sit down with those folks to try to 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 try to establish a supply agreement. In good times, I don't blame them. In good times, I say, Ron, what you got on unleaded today? Guy, what you got on unleaded today? Blah 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 blah, and you buy the cheapest product. Mm -hmm. But when you're in the times we're in now, you know, when you call a guy and Ron, they say, I don't have any for you. Yeah. And so you're out of business, and it's a it's a it's a tough spot. I've had. Uh, I've had three calls in the last 24 hours from folks in this market that good operators, they just did not have any kind of supply arrangement yeah. with their jobber. Yeah. So we'll look forward to opportunity to deal with friendly Gus, local businesses. We certainly support all our local businesses and, and you want to do business with local people. But let's talk just for a minute before we go to our guy. It, friendly Gus is a great place to work. You're always looking for people who want to work, who want to be a part of a team, aren't you? Yeah, I think I'm not biased at all. I think we're the best place in the county to work. <laughs> no, we we uh, uh, have got some incredible people. I've got uh, folks have been with us over 40 years. I've got people that have been with the company longer than I have. Uh, actually, only one now. One of the finest men that uh, we've ever had under un, under our umbrella was Bo Payton. He passed away in January after a battle with cancer. But uh, when Bo when Bo passed away, I became number two. Uh, as but no, we, we try to, um, I tell our people, never, never, never lose a person to a competitor in our industry. Uh, like my good friends at Jet or the Burger King or Chick-fil-A, don't lose somebody to, to if somebody says, hey, I, I got an offer at YKK and they're gonna pay me twice what you can pay me, and I say, good luck to you. So we, we but we haven't said that, I, I'm real proud of the fact that we've been able to really change some people's lives. I mean, I've got single moms that are making uh, considerably more than the joint family income of Lawrence County, Good. working for us. Good. And, uh, and you know, we're a tier one county, that's just to back up a little bit on economic development stuff. The, the state breaks every county into tier one, two, three, or four. You don't wanna be tier one, tier one is the 
poorest. <laughs> yeah. So you, you, we're barely in the tier one group, but the only benefit of that is you get things, jobs, tax credits, and other incentives that other counties don't. Mm -hmm. uh, but but our, uh, you know, and this number changes, Ryan would have to straighten me out here, but it's somewhere around 40 grand a, a year is what a joint family income in Lawrence County, that's the average. And of course, you know, it's our, our community standard of living is right the, with the medical, with the VA and the sure. Fairview Park and, yeah. and some of the industries and it's, 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 it's headed in the right direction. But, mm -hmm. but no, we, we feel like we, uh, uh, we try our best to do everything we can for our folks and mm -hmm. I'm real proud of the fact that I've got a lot of managers that have been with me for 25, 30 years. Mm -hmm. uh, we we uh, give them a lot of incentives and, yeah. and if they, so. And, uh, if, and they didn't start as a manager. No. You come in as an entry level, if you're willing to work hard, it's a company you can grow with. Uh, you were, you know, that changes from time to time, but almost all of our management supervisory level people started as clerical they started at the bottom and mm -hmm. kind of went the way up and yeah. climbed climbed the ladder as they say so mm -hmm. we're, real, we're real proud of that yeah being a family business you support that family and the people that come in and are employees for you you feed into their lives that's what it's all about we appreciate what friendly gus cochran brothers is and what it has been and what it will be in the future for our community guy good lord willing <laughs> <laughs> we, 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 we walk every day in faith. Yeah. You know, so. Yeah. yeah. Thank you for what you do. You're welcome. Everyone, thank you for joining us right here. Mm -hmm.